locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. know what's gonna happen you know what's gonna happen you just made the list oh boy another week this continues <laughs> chris jericho come on come oh, on good job there boston bad boy that was well, why you know it's a public service because no one else knows who the hell you're trying to do because your impressions are so bad oh you gotta be kidding me this, this is a wise guy here folks welcome back to duke loves wrestling i am the duke and yes I do enjoy doing pro wrestling impersonations, and I'm going to keep on doing them no matter what. You know, if you're any better at those impressions, I would warn you that you'd get sued for gimmick infringement, but uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, this guy every week, folks, the Boston bad boy, Iron Mike Pelosi, he just continues to put himself over and try to bury the Duke. Well, you know. I don't know. What can I say? It comes naturally to me. Listen, you, you look a little tired over there, Boston Bad Boy. Did you uh, stay up and watch that World Series Game 7? Uh, well, you know, I, I took a peek at it, yeah. and uh, I was up uh, doing something else. I don't remember what I was doing. Mindlessly wandering around the house, tinkering, as I normally do, cleaning. Of course, of you course. Know, avoiding getting yelled at by the girlfriend for not you know, doing whatever I was supposed to do. Listen, and she's tough. I mean, I call yeah. her rowdy for, for a reason. And she's and a tough one. You're spot on. Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, it was on and you know i just couldn't believe what i was seeing yeah so i uh, i yeah. stuck with it uh my boss is a big uh, cubs fan oh so i was waiting to see whether or not he would be in today mm. uh for, to work or he would be taking a of course <laughs> a, a day of relax a personal, day, <laughs> a yeah. personal day to recoup <laughs> uh and it turns out uh, he was in today very happy oh wow he wanted to gloat that's right listen i, I i'm gonna go off the rails just for a second here oh boy i got nothing against the chicago cubs yeah and i don't care about the Cleveland Indians, okay? So let me just put that out there. Yeah, well, I think most of America felt that way, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. but uh, first of all, great World Series, yeah. uh, great Game, Game seven. 7. That was fantastic. Thing, you know, entertaining. entertaining and all that good stuff. But I, I got a bone to pick with some of you out there, Uh oh. okay? I'm talking to you, Boston Red Sox fans. <laughs> Here's what grinds my gears. Oh, boy. Okay? The Boston Red Sox fans. Yeah. This is how crazy they are. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland Indians, their manager is Terry Francona. That's right. The former manager of the no. Boston Red Sox. He, the golden boy. Yes. I, the man was a saint. Here's a guy who who broke the curse of the Bambino. Key to the city. Yes. Delivered two championships yeah. to the Boston Red Sox. Right. Okay. And, and a decent human being. Correct. Shout out to, to, his nickname is Tito. Shout out to Tito Francona. Just a, just a class act. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The Boston Red Sox fans, the majority of you, were actually cheering for the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's uh, it's sort of like you know when you're in when you're when, when you're in the prison camp together. Yep. You know, you become buddies, oh, even yeah. though you're not you know may necessarily be on the same side about everything. There's a certain connection when you're when you're a cursed mm. enterprise. I think that, uh, but that is that's kind of BS. It's though. BS because it's not like the Indians are some winning team, some no, big dynasty. They haven't won since 1945. What, what, you know, they had a, right. a drought as well. Right, exactly. So what you know, yeah. and, and then listen. To this so the 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 former general manager of the Red Sox mm -hmm. Theo Epstein correct he's a general manager of the Chicago Cubs now yep so some of these know-it-all Boston Red Sox fans yep. have the audacity to say well if Theo was over there that's why I'm rooting for him the general you're, manager yeah, you're rooting for a back office guy. I know <laughs> think about that for a second this is how insane uh, by these the way Red Sox who, who the Red Sox fans are. crucified yes and, and, ran he left out of town. and we ran him out of town. We ran him out of town. Right? Now he's, you know, well, he went and did whatever. I, yeah. It's embarrassing. Well, you know what it is? This town is absolutely full of contrarians. Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, but now we're like borderline contrarians. Because you remember back when you were a kid going to a Red Sox game. Mm -hmm. I remember vividly my grandfather taking me. I must have been four years old. Taking the green line. And the game, it poured. It got rained out. And there was nobody at Fenway Park. No. Uh, just nobody. before it rained. Nobody. There was nobody there. Nobody. And everybody hated. They went there because they hated the Red Sox. That's right. It was it was like this yep. Stockholm this syndrome. Yes, this and we and it was it was sort of like we're going to go there and we're all just going to it's going to be catharsis and we're just going to watch them lose we're and not hell with it. Yes. Yeah. But you know what? 
winning was the worst thing that happened because in our in our losing we had character. Yes, um, and I think that in our winning. We've become a holes. Oh. We've become what we've hated, which were the Yankees. Exactly, and and it goes into other sports like the Patriots, and uh, well, you know, I won't say I, I would say Bruins and Celtics fans are pretty no, they're, cool. They're they, cool. They're they, cool. They, they're, they're they get it. Yeah, but these Red Sox uh, fans, yeah. I, I well, just, the, yeah, and I, you know. and the, the the pink hats, which oh, has my. become a, a, a euphemism Don't even get me for with that. someone who um, you know just sort of as a, a fair weather fan, a bandwagon bandwagon jumper. Uh, you know, the maybe it happens with every team. I'm sure it will happen with the Chicago. Cubs now. Yeah. There's going to be a, a huge market for people wanting the hats and mm-hmm. people in Chicago all of a sudden. All the crap that comes with it. That's right. That's what it is. And listen, before anyone talks nonsense, I love the city of Boston. I love my fellow Bostonians. I'm mm-hmm. born and raised in Boston. But, real you also, Boston. but you also hate them. But that's what we well, do here. I can't stand Red Sox fans specifically when it comes to <laughs> sports because right. they do foolishness like this. Right. You disgrace yourself. Right. Tito Francona Gave you everything, and this is the slap in the face you give the poor guy. I got to tell a story okay. because this is a sport, a true Boston sporting Please. story. Um, so my grandfather, who's who's passed away, oh. uh, my my dad's dad, um, was a big fan back in the day. So uh, his brother-in-law, so it'd be like my great uncle, mm-hmm. uh, had some money, and they got season tickets to the very first season of the Patriots, and oh. the Patriots in their first season played at Fenway Park, yep. Boston, Boston. So this Patriots. is in the early '60s. So they go every game, and the Patriots lose. I think they had a completely losing season. All right, they just get killed. So every you know, at the game, they would say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, today's attendance was ten thousand. Da da da. <laughs> the New England or the Boston Patriots Boston would Patriots, like to yeah. would thank like to thank you for coming. So they go to you know eight home games, and every home game, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's game. Da, 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 da. So the final game of the season, they're playing, I believe, Miami, mm-hmm. if I'm remembering the story correctly, and they just they blow it. They just they literally it just falls apart for them. You know, and we're, and, and here is my grandfather, and they're, rooting, they're hoping to get one win. This new team, Boston. And uh, my grandfather, a little backstory, the sweetest guy I ever met. The guy was just like the nicest, gentlest guy. Hmm. Not, just like everything, always looking just to be happy, how you doing, do anything for the anybody. The glass is half full. Always. And just have a laugh. Nothing negative. I, I don't remember. He never got mad. I can't think, you know. So here he is. He's with his with his, his in-laws, and they're watching the game. And to the final game, the Patriots, it falls apart. The announcer comes on, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank you. The attendance today was ten thousand. One, the New England page or the Boston Patriots would like to thank you for coming. And my grandfather stands up in the bleachers, and he says, "Thank us. They should get on their knees and beep us." <laughs> That's a Boston fan. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's dedicated. That's yep. Dedicated. Went to every game, mm-hmm. hoping for a win. And you know what? You didn't give us a win. There you go. Yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get. Yeah. yeah. Don't it's thank me. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. We need you more know. fans like that, not the pink hats. Yeah. We need to hold our teams accountable. Yes. But don't crap on people when when they when they go out the door. Show some loyalty. Right, you know, for somebody I mean, who helped yeah, you out, exactly. Who won you a championship, <laughs> by right. the way. The right. manager is the most important guy, other than the players. Cut the crap. Well, here, here's it'll okay. be interesting to what happens with uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots. Oh yeah, you know, when that eventually ends, yep. which when is going to happen. Breakup happens. Yeah. Um, you know who ends up on who? Who gets the shaft? Oh, Someone's going to get it. You already know what's yeah. going to happen with so, that. Yeah. Hey, let's get back to what we're really talking about. Well, here. I, I just want to throw one other thing out yep. because we have to here. We we have Super Tuesday coming up. Oh boy, it's the big election. Yeah. Right. And I was thinking about this Boston bad boy. Yeah. We talked about this before. You know, Hillary Clinton <laughs> yeah. is the Roman Reigns <laughs> of the election. All right? All think, right? Think about this. The machine is forcing Hillary oh, no. Clinton okay. on us, just like the machine is forcing Roman Reigns on us. But the fans don't really want Roman Reigns. We don't really want Hillary Clinton. It is what it is. And then you go to the well, other. Some people don't really. Well, I mean, there are, there there has to be a contingent of people a that do. There's always smattering that will cheer because that's just what they're well, used to doing. I think there's some people who are true you believers. Know. Well, you know, true believers in Roman Reigns, right? Who knows? Well, yeah. But then you then you have uh, a guy like Trump. Yeah. Trump, who is he on the on the WWE roster? Who who is a person well, that he's Ric Flair? I mean, he's oh, he's not Ric Flair. He's not the greatest of all time. That, that, no, no, but no, he's but he's doing the act. He's he's doing an act. He's doing a act. He's doing the act that he, I'm the. He's doing the I'm the greatest of all time act. But at least he's making it up though. Right. So who's a guy that would make up being the greatest of all time? You tell me. Is that. who who is it like a, a guy who's kind of despised? And semi liked at the same time because they just want to laugh. He's the Miz. 
Uh, Trump is the Miz. All right. That's who he is. All right. Right? So he's a guy that people just, they don't know what to do with him. That makes right? sense. Well, I mean, they want to make him president. Yeah, but who knows? But then you look at a guy like Bernie Sanders. Yeah. yeah. Bernie yeah. Sanders is, is Daniel Bryan. Interesting. He's the guy that the fans want. Yep. Who the, who the machine does not, not want, want and did everything in their power to push out. Interesting. Are you right. trying to say this because you know that I, I enjoy Bernie Sanders for, uh, for more than one reason, and you're trying to get me to like Daniel Bryan? That's is right. That what the, oh, hey, you, you already <laughs> know where what I'm going with this. Yeah. this is trying yeah. to go? Yeah. But then you got Joe Stein. Oh, boy. So Joe Stein is, is Sasha Banks. Oh, no. She, she's capable. I don't know. I, don't know. Would I, make I, I have great to put an end to this. Top of the line We're here, going. but unfortunately, once again, the machine just keeps... Snatching it away from her. I don't know about right? that. Right, and then know. you got Gary Johnson, who <laughs> you know, Gary Johnson is 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 like um, uh, what's his name there? Uh, I can't even think about it. the We the People guy. He, the he's people. he's Jake Hager, Jack Swagger. People are like, ah, oh, he's okay, but we don't really want to see him. He's right. in his own universe. He's in his own universe. So this is what it, you might be right about Vince McMahon fixing this election. Well, the, you cast, may have the characters are quite the cast, cast, aren't they? They fall right into place. I with mean, this you nonsense. think about it. Yeah, the, the, you know? the Gary Johnson. I mean, you, you know, you look and say, okay, well, we live in an information age. Yep. We have the two major parties. There's no reason why a third party candidate couldn't have all the sort of factors. To, to, you know, maybe it's an unsuccessful run, yeah. but at least be taken seriously by media or by people. They shut them up. Well, I don't know if they shut them up or, they, they, or they're or they specifically being crazy because it's part of a uh, something. Part of the act. Part of the act. Well, you know, it's the machine. And then you got Bill Weld going, I think I just made a huge mistake. Absolutely. <laughs> Poor Bill. And Bill's a local guy here. You know, yeah. he was a great governor here in Massachusetts. Poor Bill. Yeah, I mean, he just, uh, I think he went into it probably with the best intentions, but uh, it sort of uh, petered off the rails. He I mean, he hitched his wagon to No one was expecting what was going on. Yeah, that's just And uh, we, we've lived through it. Think of the stories for the grandkids, though. Yeah. Good point. Good Actually, point. and speaking of Gary Johnson, uh, I, I made a great, it occurred to me the other day, all these people who are sort of like young bros mm. who want to talk politics but don't really know anything, they call themselves libertarian. Yep. Libertarian has become the pink hat of politics. There it is. Right? There it's it is. Become, it's become, I don't have any real, I'm, I'm just speaking gobbledygook. Yep. And I'm late to the party. And I really don't have, a, I don't really care, but I'm going to try and sound smart or that I'm into it. And I'm going to call myself a libertarian. That's right. And they're really not. Because I'm edgy. I'm cool. That's right. Yeah. right. That's, that's, that's the outside Stop thing. it right now. Okay. All of you. <laughs> stop it. Can we get back on yeah, topic? Yeah, let's get back on topic here. I know they're, they're going to pull the plug on us if we keep this up. Folks, we got an exciting show for you here. All right? We have more of your listener-submitted questions for our Ask Duke portion of the show. Terrell Tempo, he's going to be joining us. He's going to be talking about the TWE event coming up, where, which he'll be main eventing. We also have Babom. This is the guy from the You Should Play This podcast. He's going to drop by and discuss Hell in the Cell, which happened this past Sunday. All of that, plus we're going to run the ropes. But before we get to any of that, I want to thank you. That's right, you, the loyal listeners of Duke Loves Wrestling. Thank you for tuning in on iTunes and, and other podcast apps. Thanks for sending me messages on Twitter and Facebook, at Duke Loves Wrestling. A quick reminder, all of our shows are on our YouTube channel. So if you missed any previous episodes, just type in Duke Loves Wrestling and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another episode. Okay? Keep on sending that, that support, and we'll keep on delivering great podcast material for you. I was going to say, before we jump into uh, Run the Ropes, you went to the event that happened this I past sure did. week. I sure did. And I was just, you were talking about fans. Mm -hmm. how, are the, how are the Boston fans reacting to uh, in the wrestling? I mean, are they their oh, usual man. miserable they, contrarian mm, selves? Nope. I'll, I'll tell you right now, the Boston fans are some of the hottest fans, which is why WWE keeps coming back. Do you think there's any crossover between Red Sox fans and wrestling fans? Wrestling fans are much cooler than Red Sox. Fans. I I would agree. I'm much sure cooler. that you know no one's going there to fist fight in the in no, the ring you know, no. or in the, in the stands. Boston just, fans there's are a whole all contingent harmony. of Red Sox fans who are going there to go f have a fist fight at, in at beautiful took, Fenway Park. I took my bodyguard yeah to Hell in the Cell and <laughs> and, and, and yeah. you know listen, I, I got to have a female bodyguard because she's excellent and she'll knock you out. That's right, but unexpected. She was actually pointing out the fact that that wrestling fans for the most part are friendly. Yeah. 
everyone's just having a good time and even walking out the building they'll be doing the chants and all that but it's right. a community it's a, yeah, right it's no not, one's looking there's to, no aggression yeah there's no and, real uh, aggression it's man. funny you say that because I, I did i got a note from your bodyguard during the show oh yeah and uh she sent some pictures and i can't believe you were able to get inside the hood blimp inside and take those pictures <laughs> what are you i mean it was like guy. it was like you were taking it like, took pictures of how far away from we were, were up you? top a topographic map we were hanging was, out in the nosebleeds but we ended up getting moved that's up. right i know okay. you get moved up Come but on. you like to hang with the people i like to hang with, hang the, with the common man want to see everybody that's <laughs> right that's right let's go to run the ropes here It's time to run the ropes. I give my opinion on the top five stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. Rudy Russo is going to reign supreme. That's right, folks. Rudy Russo has reached out to us here at the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, and he's made it clear that this coming Saturday, November 5th, TWE presents Ground Zero, and Rudy Russo is going to be taking on Terrell Tempo. And guess what? Terrell Tempo, you better lace up your boots, brother, because Rudy Russo is ready for you. Both competitors are going to be going at it for a future shot at the Texas Championships. I can tell you right now, Rudy Russo sounds so passionate and so serious about that. We're going to have Terrell Tempo on the show a little later, and he's going to let us know what he thinks about that. Billy Corgan loses his lawsuit against TNA. Yes, folks, according to TheGuardian.com, the Smashing Pumpkins frontman, Billy Corgan, and also the president of TNA, he has failed in his attempt to gain legal ownership of the company. What will that mean for the potential sale of TNA? Will the WWE gain their library and add it to the WWE network? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, stay tuned because personally, I am sick and tired of this whole mess here. This is terrible for the wrestling business that we're going to lose another wrestling promotion. And we can only hope and pray that the WWE gets that wrestling tape library so they can use that and we can at least have access to that great content. Stay tuned. James Ellsworth helps Dean Ambrose gain a title shot. That's right, folks. The guy that JBL says looks like he's a turtle without a shell, that James Ellsworth, he actually helped Dean Ambrose beat AJ Styles this week on SmackDown. Now listen, that's going to lead to a future shot at AJ Styles' SmackDown Heavyweight Championship. Now if you remember, last week Ellsworth super kicked AJ, which cost Ambrose the match. It was actually a disqualification as, as a result of that. So this week, Ellsworth was hanging around ringside, screwing around. AJ Styles being the great man that he is, he actually shoulder tackled Ellsworth and knocked him over a table. That stinking punk Ellsworth sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. AJ Styles settled him, but then he ended up losing the match as a result of it. Mark my words, Ellsworth. You're in for a bruising, my man, because AJ Styles, the face that runs the place, is not going to continue to put up with your nonsense. Goldberg attacks Paul Heyman. Yes, folks, this is breaking news according to WWE.com. And as seen on Raw, Bill Goldberg not only jackhammered Rusev, but he gave a spear. He gave a spear to Paul Heyman. Now, this caused Heyman to be rushed to the hospital. As you can imagine, this has sent shockwaves throughout the whole pro wrestling world. Paul Heyman is an advocate. He is not a pro wrestler. Now, word on the street is that there may be a lawsuit filed against Goldberg for being so aggressive with the advocate. I'm telling you right now, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar is not going to put up with this kind of nonsense from you, pal. You can expect to be given an F5. New champion crowned at Hell in the Cell. Yes, folks, I was there live to witness Charlotte beat Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship, and it'll go down as one of the most memorable Hell in the Cell matches of all time. These two competitors made history as the first two women to ever officially headline a WWE main event pay-per-view. Will we see another women's match headline a WWE main roster pay-per-view in the next 12 months? You'll have to stay tuned to find out, but these ladies definitely set the bar, and you can bet on that. You've heard what I think. Now tell me what you think. Do you think I, I'm a crazy person? Yes. Do you, oh, yeah, listen to this guy. Do you agree with me? Yes. Head over to Facebook, head over to Twitter, type in Duke Loves Wrestling. 
Let us know, folks. Up next, we have the man, Babom. He's going to talk about Hell in the Cell. This is Dusty Wolf, and I invite all you wrestling fans to join me over here on Duke Loves Wrestling. Babom. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Folks, I had a fantastic time at the Hell in the Cell pay per view this past Sunday. It was live here in Boston. Now, look, at the show. I ran into a great guy who not only is a huge wrestling fan, but he's also a video game expert, okay? I'm talking about the guy from the You Should Play This podcast, the one, the only, Babam. I feel so flat. What a, what a humble introduction. Listen, I, I, uh, I like to I like to build them up before I knock them down, you know? That's, oh, boy, <laughs> man. Now, That's wait. Intense. Before we even talk about wrestling, I got to ask you a big question here. And, and, and you know, the, the Boston bad boy and I, he and I have been going back and forth on this for a while now. Oh, here we so go. this is right, huge. I'm ready. This is huge. You're, 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 you know, please say the right thing. <laughs> I'll do, uh, you know, I'll say, I'll say the right thing. Okay. Out of the two options here, which is the greatest pro wrestling video game of all time? Is it pro wrestling which was on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. Or is it WCW versus NWO Revenge, which was on N64? WCW versus NWO Revenge. Oh! <laughs> See, I've been trying to tell him that... Thank you for agreeing with me. Unbelievable. First of all, there's a, there's a trend here where all of the guests agree with me. Unbelievable. Uh, and and you're, you're scheduling them, so I don't know what's going on with that. You know, but I'll obviously... Tell, I'll tell you, man. Go ahead. Pro wrestling's a great. Pro wrestling's a great game. It's the greatest uh, of all wrong. time. So, but but it, but mean, it's bush league by comparison. They didn't oh, even have the rights yeah. to have any names. Starman, it's a, King Slender. It's a, it's a watered down version of Fire Pro Wrestling on the Famicom. And <laughs> yeah, it's one step it's, away from Tecmo Bowl. All listen, right. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something right now. I didn't invite you to come on this show, but bomb to to trash. The the just, amazing pro wrestling. He's telling you the, the NES, truth. He said okay? he would tell you the truth. He don't, told you the truth, which I, happens to be my opinion as well. We all love fire pro wrestling, but don't disrespect <laughs> pro wrestling for the NES. And Boston Bad Boy, you're just ridiculous. You, you know, you you play Listen, that N64. Oh. N64 is so leaves. You know why N64 immediately wins four players at once? Oh God! Here we right, go. you can get everyone together what? and just have a, you, a rumble. You could do it on NES as well. Oh. Now, oh, what you gotta buy know. adapters? I don't know. Yeah, you gotta buy adapters, but I don't know if that's the reason why it it works. It's it's the first game to. When THQ put that game out, they di- it was such a diverse storyline and experience for the gamer. Right. Where when you had pro wrestling, which had uh, you know just a, a great marquee of unknown conceptual wrestlers, that came out. <laughs> don't get don't get don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but we're talking about you know era differences. We're also talking. I mean, can you guys really compare and contrast? 1986. No, you can't. Yes, you can. You know, 1999. It's very hard for you to All jump. Right. The, you know what? You know yeah, what? I mean, you've jumped a whole generation yeah. in in gra- right. You're in a whole different universe. I, I understand you're what's going on. Three different yeah. councils. You're in your three <laughs> systems <laughs> yeah. separate. Just, just from so that. Just so you know, Babam, I, I introduced you as a video game expert, but it's clear by your answer to that question. Okay, that you may just be advanced, but oh, not boy. really Here at we the go. See how see what he does? Yet when he you, likes when you to cut this. the legs out of people who don't well, agree with he him. He disagreed with me. That's and it. And someday it's going to bite you right in the ass. And and I, I hope I'm there to see it. I hope like you you mouth off <laughs> yeah, to great. a wrestler Listen. and you say something to them and they just they just put you in a lock and choke you out because I will just applaud. Don't hurt me, John Whatever Cena, you please. Do, don't say anything to Randy Orton. That guy uh, yeah. <laughs> out of nowhere. That's right. That's right. He doesn't he doesn't care, man. He's I, crazy. I've seen so many YouTube videos of him just like like a kid interviewing someone. <laughs> <He's> just, like, <laughs> I can't wait till ha- it's going to happen to Duke. I really, I know it. I can feel oh, just, it. Just wish bad on me. Just do I don't that. wish. Oh, listen, this is you running your own mouth. You uh, invite some people, uh, nice people on the show, yeah. and then you do, you cut the legs out from under them. You call them an expert because you think it's going to support your case. Hey. And when they lay down the truth. Well, like our friend just did. You. That he agrees hey, with you. Listen, great minds think alike. What can I say? Unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> All right, let's let's get on with the pro wrestling talk because clearly I struck out with the video game talk. Oh, here. absolutely. All right. Now listen, Babam, you were at uh, the Hell in a Cell pay per view 
which I was, I was there. In fact, you know, you and I were in, in line grabbing some uh, treats at the same time there, which is pretty that's cool. Right, man. French fries and beer. That's right. That's, that's right. A... <laughs> Listen, what is the letter grade that you would give the entire show? The entire show? The entire show, what would you grade it? I would give it a, um, oh, man, being there, i give it a C plus. Okay. All right. Being there, it was a great show. I think the problem is, is when you when you give these shows letter grades like that, it puts a lot of like because there were so there were some A matches, but there was just some flops too. So I think that's what makes that hard for me to give it an all around score. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, you you weren't able to really commit, so you know we'll we'll talk about a couple of individual matches and maybe we can right. get we can get out of the middle range there. We we had somebody uh, Silver Fox shout out to Sh- Silver Fox. We had her review a pay per view one time and she gave everything a C. And I'll tell you, yeah, but Bob, honestly, if you do that, I'm gonna have to hang up on you. I just that's, I can't no, sit through. Not, no man, even if you lie, lie to us, I can't give it a C. lie to us, I don't, <laughs> because I don't, I don't want to hang the up. Biggest problem. That's why. That's why my girlfriend can't. Stand <laughs> I'm telling lie. you that commitment. Well, man. Yeah, it's that. You it's know? that. What, what's the meme say that uh, relationship is just people asking each other what they want to eat until that, one of them dies. That's Hey, yeah. it's just you caught. This is what we get caught in here with I'm letter grades. You. So you know, well, I think Duke shouldn't even ask, but give us something. Oh, here we go again. Parlo on the Duke. That's I, right. Th- this is like a, a, a I'm handicap interject- match. I'm, here, I'm interjecting you know? here on behalf of the sanity of our listeners. Unbelievable. Okay, well, let's just go straight to one of the matches here: Roman Reigns versus Rusev for the United States Championship inside a Hell in the Cell. But bomb, what did you think? I give you. I give that match. I give that match a B minus all day. Um, and the reason why is because if the only thing that, that ruined that match, Rusev is just a phenomenal performer. And Roman Reigns really did give it his all. Uh, I just, uh, I really, I, I can't stand him. Um, I hate the way they make him look way stronger than he should look. Um, and the finish of the match is what ruined it for me. The fact that those guys opened the show with it, though, showed a lot of, uh, a lot of guts. Um, and uh, I, if I were to give that a, the rating, I'd give it like a B minus, just because Rusev played that, he played it hard, and then, uh, you know, of course, Roman Reigns with the, exactly what you expect Roman Reigns to do. He's, he's like, it's like watching a new John Cena. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, first and foremost, Rusev, you're a, a, a real American hero in, in all of our eyes because you were married to Lana. And I'll just leave it at that, okay, without going any well, further. You know, you know, it's funny, though, because he's supposed to be the villain in all this, yet Roman Reigns come out and slut shames Lana and then makes fun of their relationship mm-hmm. and then bullies them. Mm-hmm. And, if, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. No. Make a heel a heel and make a face a face. Call yeah. it what it is. I Don't agree me. with you. I, and you know what, Roman <laughs> Reigns? Roman Reigns, you're a punk. I don't like you. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you're a nice guy, Joe in Hawaii or whatever your name is. But yeah. but Roman Reigns, the character, you're a punk. Okay, just simple take, as that. Take the mic away from him. That's man. it. It's not. It's not science. Give him. Give him somebody. Give him somebody who can talk. Well, it's easy. Vince McMahon, I know you're listening. Roman Reigns <laughs> is is literally killing us here. He's just terrible. Okay, he's terrible. All right. I would give oh, that man. match a B-minus as well, so I'm, I'm with you right there, brother. All right. All let's, right. Let's move on to Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins for the Uni- Universal Heavyweight Championship in a Hell in a Cell. What would you give that match? I love this match. I loved it. I really like I gave. I'll give it an A all day. Uh, effort from both men. Uh, the introduction, the, you know, the just the straight-up movement of, of Jericho coming in uh, you know, with the accidental door open, that whole thing. I just like the way they planned it out. Their timing couldn't have been better. Mm. Uh, some of some of their some of their uh, works didn't didn't fall through. The great, but it, it, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins and and Jericho, for all accounts, are, are amazing in the ring. And um, I just I, I got to give that I got to give that match an A because it was edge of the, edge of your seat stuff. Did I think at any point that Rollins was going to win? No way. But they sold a nice show for me on that. That's I mean that's just my opinion. So yeah, it was great. I mean you know anytime you put Chris Jericho in a match to have any kind of part in it. I mean you're talking about the first undisputed uh, champion and the guy who's really one of the hottest people going right now. You know you're going to get your money's worth. So I, I agree with you on that one as well. I would give that match an A. 
Uh, can't give it an A plus because the finish was kind of hokey, but that was an yeah. A match mainly because Jericho gave it that extra push. Without him, it's probably more like a B, but Jericho gave it that extra letter grade uh, in, in my book. Now, the main event, and this yeah. is historic. Yeah. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Raw Women's Championship inside of Hell in a Cell. What are we talking about here? Well, I mean, was it inside of Hell in a Cell? A majority of it wasn't. Uh, I <laughs> feel like the first 10 minutes of that was uh, when when Charlotte, what am I giving it? I'm going to give it an A. And I'm not giving it an A plus. I'm not giving it an A minus. I'm giving it a solid A. And and the, the work these women did is mind-blowing. The way Sasha's body landed the second before the bell rang, she went underneath. The, dude, I mean, you were sitting there. You saw it. I saw it. I thought she got whipped in the head by that oh, by yeah. that cage before she hit the ground. Oh yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The you know, and I I've been trying to watch the pay per view since I've been home to watch see if I can get a better angle on it. But here's here's the thing. I'm not going to get into detail about the the table. Uh, you know, the table bumps not working for them. That's too bad. Um, I knew, you know, looking at that match, if you look back at that match, you see, you know, that, that rusty table bump for Charlotte. Um, and then those two at the end when Charlotte's trying to throw Sasha through a table and it just will not, it would not break. break. It would not break. It wouldn't break. And you know, Charlotte, I mean, uh, Sasha weighs what? Maybe like, you know, buck 20 soaking wet. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's not, she's not putting enough pressure on it for it to break. She went through that announce table. No problem. Um, that thing crumbled. Well, the she was also power bombed through that through that announce table, though. So there was more momentum yeah. going with that. There was more momentum, and they were gassed. Both of them were gassed yeah. at the end of that match. I don't think either of them were ready uh, to be in that cell for that amount of time. No, doing those kind of stunts. Um, that being said, those two small problems that they had in the match, those women came out and did something that I think this is. Because I've been hearing a lot. I've heard Jr. criticize it. Um, I've heard Stone Cold talk about it, underminingly criticize it. I've heard a couple of different people saying that, oh, it was you know, it wasn't, it was overhyped and stuff like that. You know what? Maybe it was overhyped, but it deserved to be overhyped because it's two women stepping in to a a match that is known to destroy wrestling. It's just known to destroy your career. Mm-hmm. And. These two women came out there, and and at not one point did I think that they weren't giving it their all. The finish of the match drove me crazy. I think the woman's title is now uh, just, it it doesn't seem as big of a deal. Um, it's It's being passed back and forth between Charlotte and Sasha. Nobody's getting, you know, long run, little run, long run, little run. Nobody's getting the the run they deserve with it, and that concerns me. Like, who's writing? What? Why is this a problem? Are they waiting for Emma to come back? Where's the issue? Is Nia Jax voting into this? Who knows? But I think the big issue that I have with the finish is that Vince McMahon hates hometown heroes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to agree. <laughs> you know, and, and it's unfortunate because let me tell you something, folks. The crowd went banana when Sasha Banks came out. They just right. lost their mind. The Boston Garden the roof almost came off the place when she came out. Oh, it was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. And then what was it like when she lost? Oh. Was there booing? No. They, the, was there dead. screaming? Dead. No. Dead. It was dead. Dead. You couldn't hear a thing. Killed it. Um, I mean, like, even, you know, even, uh, you know, I like to not, not to hype anybody out, but occasionally I'll listen to the what culture stuff. Mm-hmm. And those guys were, like, in shock of, like, Boston crowd. No noise. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Nothing. Nothing was said. We walked out quiet. I didn't hear. The only time I heard noise was when I was going down to the T and I heard the guy playing the piano. Yeah, it was that bad. Was the first time, that was the first time I heard noise the whole entire time. There was just dead silence from the garden to the tea. And it was, and it was uh, more confusion. Like, that was the finish? Like, what? Well, yeah, and, you know, I think it all had to do with the fact that 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 table wouldn't break. Yeah, the table I mean, wouldn't you break. Can't, you, you can't. I, there was clearly a different finish in mind. And Charlotte, Charlotte looked tired. Sasha, I don't think was Sasha was even with it. 
at towards the end. She took so many damn bumps. The worst bump she took all night was when they were trying to get her off the stretcher and she was still hooked onto that line. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, that was that was that, tough. That, that's terrible, man. I thought she was actually going to injure her neck, like injure it. Um, but we, but we but give yeah, so, we give the ladies though a, a big round of applause though. It just proves oh that God. the women absolutely can headline a pay per view and carry it in that manner. Uh, absolutely, they proved it. They proved it. Oh, absolutely! I couldn't agree more. Mm-hmm. What did you What did you think of that match, Duke? I love it. I'm, I'm I'm wondering. I loved it. What grade did you give it? I gave that match an A, and it would have been an A plus had it not been for that finish. I don't I didn't mind Charlotte winning the match because the the quality of match was so high, but the table bump didn't make sense. And I got to be honest, it was a combination of, of Sasha Banks not angling the table right. If she would have propped that table up on the top rope, it would have been at the right angle. So when she got thrown into it, she would have hit the weakest point, which is the middle of the table. Right. And she would have no, had a I better agree. shot of it breaking. So th- or at the very least, unhook the bottom. Unhook the bottom, yeah, yes. The, everything was up, you know? Yeah. So Absolutely. That, that's technical stuff and, and what have you. But it was still an unbelievable match. And in fact, we, you know, we encourage folks, head over to the WWE Network, pull up. Hell in the Cell 2016, pull up that match because it's worth watching. It was about 35 minutes of of just great action. Even before the bell rang, there was a good 10 minutes of action. That's how how compelling the match was. Definitely a memorable Hell in the Cell match. Listen, Babam, if folks want to learn about uh, video games and, and, and all the other cool things that you have going on on your channel, what's the best way that they can reach you online? Oh man, you could all you got to do is go to you should play this dot com. Um, we it's it, it's just nerd, it's geek culture, man. We just have a blast. We anything from wrestling to video games. We have guests on who have you know shows in Adult Swim. We have people on who do all sorts of fun, goofy, weird things. Um, anything you want to you know anything nerdy. We just mm, we want it. That's right. Wrestling. Falls right into that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Now, listen, before we let you go, you got to yeah. give a shout out to your, your girlfriend, who's a huge wrestling fan. I know she's listening to the show. Give a shout out to your lady there. Oh, <laughs> uh, give a shout out, Jess, baby. I love you. I hope you're uh, listening, enjoying the night. And um, I'll talk. To, I'll talk to you in like 15 minutes after I'm done with the interview. <laughs> His name is Babam. He's from the You Should Play This podcast at You Should Play This dot com. We'll definitely have you back sometime, brother. Thank you very much for joining us on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Sounds awesome, Duke. Thank you very much. Enjoyed my time. Folks, we're rocking and rolling here. What a great job there by Babam. But we have somebody on line two, and this is somebody who's connected to last week's guest, Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Now, if you remember, Rudy Boy came on and he spoke about uh, historic cage matches his special relationship with Brian Kendrick and, and even a uh, relationship that he has with Lucha Underground. You can head over to YouTube. Just type in Duke Loves Wrestling. Check out Week 28 with our exclusive interview with Rudy Boy Gonzalez. Uh, on the line right now, we have a guy by the name of Terrell Tempo, and he is going to be at the Texas Wrestling Entertainment Card that's happening live this upcoming Saturday. So without further ado... How are you, Terrell? I'm doing pretty good, man. I can't complain. And once again, thank you for having me on the show. Hey, no problem. No problem. Terrell, you have a huge match taking place at Ground Zero. Okay, now that's the event that's happening. It's hosted by Texas Wrestling Entertainment. It's this Saturday, November 5th. This guy, Rudy Russo, he's been talking some big trash about you here. What do you think about this Rudy Russo? Oh man, I don't think he's been. Th- I haven't seen what he said, but uh, Russo, we we faced each other a good amount of times. Uh, I won the first one, and he got me on the second one, and it was just kind of a way of who made the mistake first, who was able to capitalize to come out and win. But uh, what did he say exactly? Well, he said that he's going to beat you. He said <laughs> that he will be the future Texas champion if he has to go through you. He will. So this is this is big talk from that guy. I mean, that's, and, and that's what I want it to be because you don't want nobody else but them at their 100% of them at their most confident. But it's just, you know, I want to see that before, but I'm, it's going to be sad how he's going to feel after the match when he doesn't. Oh, that's boy. Oh, crazy. boy. Double T is laying it down for you, Rudy Russo. I hope you're listening there. Now, listen, Terrell, 
the Texas uh, title has a has a pretty stellar history. I mean, guys like Brian Danielson, aka Daniel Bryan, he's held it. He, even AJ Styles has held that title uh, once before. What would it mean uh, to you and your career? to not only win this number one contenders match that you have coming up with Rudy Russo, but then to go on and win the Texas title. What would that mean to you? I mean, it would mean, it would mean everything uh, for me in the sense of I started in Texas. I started with uh, Rudy trained me uh, at Texas Wrestling Academy, which we also do the TWE, Texas Wrestling Entertainment. So I would feel like the three years that I've been putting in, uh, I've been with the TWE from the title to its lows and we're back at a high point, and I feel like with this prestigious title on the line, it would just, you know, be icing on the cake to finish it off. Uh, or it's for me to start it back with the title returning as the top guy. Yeah, that's that's the truth. Now, when you say uh, Rudy trained you, are you talking about Rudy Boy Gonzalez, the, the, the trainer of champions? Yes, I'm talking about Rudy Boy Gonzalez, the trainer of champions. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool that you were trained by him. You know, it's interesting, too, uh, Terrell, you – are also wrestling in Booker T's Reality of Wrestling uh, Federation. Yes, yes I am. How is it when you have two guys, you, you have the, the WWE Hall of Famer, Booker T, uh, being able to work with him and, and his group, and then you also have the trainer of champions, Rudy Boy Gonzalez, with, with uh, TWE. How does it feel to, to be around people who are so influential in the wrestling business? And it feels great, actually. I don't. Sometimes I think I'm dreaming still because to get those two people in your life around the same time helping you with uh, your craft is is a beautiful thing. And there's so much knowledge on both ends, and one's more knowledge can be more for TV, and one's can be more for just how it works on the independents. But overall, it's all knowledge on the business that you need to be able to soak up like a sponge. So. It's, it's a great thing. That's right. That's right. And, and you were a big wrestling fan, uh, even going back to when you were a kid. When did you realize that pro wrestling was what you wanted to do in life? Man, I, can, um, I can't tell you like who was wrestling, but I can remember the first time watching wrestling. I was like young, young. I would say probably, I just remember my parents telling my sister to come and get me because they were leaving and she came and got me and my family was into wrestling like my brothers and sisters and she was watching wrestling and from that point on I, I mean I, like I said I couldn't tell you how old I was but I had to be two or three but ever since then I've just seen it and, and I can't remember not watching wrestling uh, as far back as I can remember I've, it's always been a part of my life that's amazing that's amazing folks we're talking to uh, Terrell Tempo this is a man who's going to be taking on Rudy Russo at the TWE event coming up this upcoming Saturday you fans in Texas you're in for a treat there now Terrell when we talk about champions we talk about world champions uh, historically especially world champions of color like Sailor Art Thomas Ron Simmons Booker T, The Rock. Is Terrell Tempo somebody that will be putting on that list in the not-too-distant future? That is the ultimate goal, is to be a part of that list. And and for all those guys that, that paved the way for me, it would be a, a way to show my sign of respect and also just a way for me to say that I did what I was planning on doing. Uh, that's right. That's right. Now, is there a wrestler in particular that you studied the most or that you've borrowed some moves from and what have you? Um, that I've studied the most. I mean, my favorite of all time is Shawn Michaels, but I don't know if I would say I... I guess I had to study him the most because he's the one who I watch the most and I can look up, but I watch a lot now. But my main thing now is to try to not... is to come up with new stuff, to be so different that you don't think of anybody when you watch me but Tempo. Well, that's the truth. Well, listen, you, you want to be the, the first... Terrell Tempo and, and not the uh, the next whomever else. I, I can respect that. And you have that devastating uh, finishing maneuver that, boy, I'll tell you, you, you really lay your opponent out. What, what do you call that move again? Oh, that's called uh, paying dividends. Paying dividends, folks. And, you and, like and, that one? Yo, that's, that's a good one. I'm telling you. That's, that's a good one. Rudy Russo, you better watch out because Terrell Tempo is going to be introducing you to paying dividends coming up. Now, Talk about your family there. Uh, do you have anyone that you want to shout out, your loved ones? Oh, yeah, my mom and my dad, uh, all my brothers and sisters. I got, you know, four sisters and three brothers. So they're all going to be listening to it, so they all get a shout out. That's right. In the name each one of them, I don't think we got that much time. <laughs> 
Well, folks, you you heard it there. Tarot Tempo, Saturday, November 5th. Texas Wrestling Entertainment presents Ground Zero. Now, this is taking place at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church Gym. Tickets will be on sale at the event, and the doors open at 6.45 p.m. Be on time so you don't miss anything, folks. This is going to be a Pier 6 brawl. We're talking about Tempo taking on Rudy Russo. So, Tempo, you said that Shawn Michaels is is a, a wrestler that... Growing up, you enjoyed watching as somebody who, whose style that you that you appreciate. And we know that Michaels has a connection with uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez, one of the people who trained you. What is your favorite Shawn Michaels match? Like, if you could point somebody to a Shawn Michaels match that really, uh, you say, listen, that's why I enjoy watching that guy. What, what would it be? I think it's going to be the obvious answer. The WrestleMania 25 with Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Uh, the first one they did was at 25. Boy, I and mean, what a match that was. You know, Michaels was coming back from that severe back injury, which a lot of folks felt that was that literally took away his career. They didn't think he was going to come back. And, and he was able to get himself back in a WWE ring. And, you know, for my money, he actually wrestled better during that period than he ever did before. Oh, yeah, that's a, that was a question. People always kind of ask, was he better before he left or after he came back? And It's hard to choose between the two, but I'm, I'll probably go with the, when he came back. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm with you 100%. That's right. Now, have you done any tag team wrestling at all, Tempo, or are, are you mostly a uh, singles competitor? Oh, I've actually uh, done a, quite a bit of tag team. Me and another uh, wrestler that came out of Texas Wrestling Academy named El Fantastico, oh. who was a tag team champion for... Uh, I want to say a little over a year. We actually just ended up uh, losing them not too long ago. But so yeah, we was with the TWE Tag Team Champions for over a year. Wow. So we're we're talking about somebody who who has a lot of experience down in that Texas territory, folks. And you know, when we, when we think about the history of Texas wrestling, we talk about Shawn Michaels and we talk about. Booker T and Stevie Ray, you know, the former Harlem Heat there. We, we talk about some real heavyweights there, even Rudy Boy Gonzalez, who was in the NWA, WWF, all over the place he wrestled. So Terrell Tempo, he's coming up for you, folks. Watch out for this guy here. Now, now Tempo, we have the event coming up on Saturday, and we know that that Rudy Russo is talking a little trash there. So what, what do you think? What's, what's going to happen on Saturday? Saturday, what's going to happen to Rudy Russo is what happens to everybody else. The Rudy Russo is going to be introduced to paying dividends, but he's a hell of a fighter. So I might, you know, I might have to work on it. I know I will. But Russo, he just needs to know that he's not walking out with that number one contendership. You heard it there, folks. Okay, we're talking about Terrell Temple. Rudy Russo, he's coming for you. That's Saturday, November 5th. Be there or be square, Texas Wrestling Entertainment. Terrell, can we have you come back on the show to talk about uh, that card and what's going to happen in the future? Oh, yes. I'm always willing to come back. All right. Well, thank you very much, Terrell. Up next, the Boston Bad Boy has more of your listener-submitted questions, a.k.a. Ask Duke. But before we get to any of that, I have to remind you, head over to Barnyard Cheese. That's right, Barnyard Cheese over at 149 Avenue C between 9th and 10th Streets in New York City. You know, Boston Bad Boy. You know, I'm starving over here. I, I eat these little candies you bring in, yeah. and I had like four of them, cause, and now you're talking about barnyard cheese again. I, hey, look, man. You're, and I get, it's just like I get hangry. You're, the stomach is growling, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What do you got today? Well, last week we talked about the Smokey Joe sandwich, Yep, right? yep. We're going we're gonna to switch it up here. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to talk about something completely different. Folks, stop the presses. Barnyard cheese actually has Victor's famous empanadas oh can you believe that see you zigged when i thought you were gonna zag i'm telling you nice empanada isn't dude listen I'm listen to these expecting that they got everything from the chicken and potato the beef and black bean oh man chorizo mm -hmm. they even mm -hmm. have a spinach and cheese look at that and guess what after you eat your empanadas you can wash it down with a delicious ginger roux oh man that's ginger beer mixed with iced tea. You know, I've never had one of those. That's actually a good idea. Dude, it's because delicious. Because I do a lot of the ginger beer. I'm a big yep, fan of the ginger same beer. Here. Uh, but with the iced tea. Oh. Interesting. It's called the ginger root. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to try that. You have to. And you know what? With the ginger beer, it tickles my nose. <laughs> I sneeze. Just a little bit. The first sip, I sneeze. 
Because, you know, my family's from Jamaica. Can so you finish can the commercial, beer. please? Oh, hey, we start talking about ginger beer and, and barnyard cheese. What do you want me to do here? Stop depriving yourself of deliciousness. Visit barnyardcheese.com for more info. Enjoy. This is the pastor of wrestling, Kevin West, and I'm listening to Duke Love Wrestling. Man, I'll tell you, that Bobomb, he's something else, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't too happy that he didn't agree with me, though. I well, with you, you know, like I said, great minds think alike. And he obviously knew what he was talking about. Please. Give he me he was passionate, you know. Uh, and, and for a nerd, I mean, the guy has a podcast about video games. True. Uh, he knew his stuff. He definitely and knew he, his stuff. And he, uh, he had some strong opinions, which he, was nice. He knew his stuff except for uh, pro wrestling video games. But oh, All right. You know, he's okay. Okay. And what about uh, Terrell Tempo? Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a great match down there. Yeah, I'm concerned about him, though. I, I think that Rudy Russo is going to give him a run for his money. It may happen. Yeah. It may indeed happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it'll be a good, you know, again, if Rudy's involved, you know it's going to be legit. That's right. That's right. Shout out to Rudy Boy Gonzalez, the man who runs the Texas Wrestling Entertainment. I'd certainly like to be in Texas this weekend. I mean, the weather down there is going to be much more beautiful oh, dude, than around here. I think 89 degrees. They oh, had come on. Something like that. To, you know. A couple of cocktails. Oh, can you imagine? Have a nice dinner. We go get to, the to show. see Sugar and Spice have their first match. I know. Okay. Those, I know. Are, those are our girls, man. I got to say, I hope they use the promo we designed for them. You I know, hope we, so we as came well. up with that, that gimmick. That's and, right. Uh, I hope they use it. Rudy's been calling them Sugar and Spice, so hey. Right. So, <laughs> that's you an know? endorsement in my book. And you know something? Their mom really enjoyed the interview they did on Twitter. I'm glad. That's good. They were good. Sugar and Spice, they're they, fantastic. They got a big uh, future ahead of them. They really do. They really do. I, I can't wait to see them uh, in the big time. Yeah. I think it'll happen sooner rather Absolutely. than later. Absolutely. Same here. All Same right. Here. Question time. Yeah, what do you question got for us, Duke here? All right. Let's Boston see. Bad boy. So we got a couple of them uh, today, and, you know, I like to go in fresh. So, you okay. Because, you know, we have a cast of characters that write into the show or text in or email. Or did, you, did you go international media? at all again this week? Well, it's funny you should say that. Um, so the first question here comes from May F. Brazil. Oh, May from Brazil. May okay. from Brazil. Look at that. Oh. Brazil. 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 Have you been there? No. I have been there. Oh. And uh, it's a beautiful place. The food is unbelievable. The music is great. The music is great. The people are wonderful. And uh, a great vacation spot. If, you, if, you know, if you're willing to jump into a place that you know, English is not the first language and you yeah. think, you, you know, but... Everybody's so nice, and you go to a big city. Well, maybe May will give us some barbecue if we go oh, out to Brazil, and you know. God, I gained so much weight on that vacation. Oh, I bet Just you enjoyed it. barbecue every night. Yes, sir. So May asks, Duke, uh, do you think the team of Cesaro and Sheamus will last much longer? FYI, she adds, I love Sheamus. Please tell him he is my favorite, and I love him. Oh, okay. Seamus getting a lot of love, more than you get. You, get, ne- you I'm never telling get. You. There's never any. Uh, I can vouch for. There's never any uh, question. To say I love Duke. Please tell him I love him. Yeah, so. and, and I don't even like Seamus. I don't understand <laughs> why uh, May loves Seamus so much. That's kind of listen. Love comes in all forms. Oh, uh, clearly, clearly. Well, listen, May. Uh, I do not feel that Seamus and Cesaro are going to last much longer. I, I didn't even want them to be paired up in the first place. I think Seamus is the dead weight, and Cesaro is the star of that tag team. And I know you love Cesaro, so please don't beat me up for that. But expect... Uh, she loves Sheamus. Sheamus. She she loves Sheamus. You should love Cesaro. He's much cooler than that <laughs> Is Sheamus. that who you secretly love? Yes, yes, I love Cesaro. <laughs> so, no, I, I don't think they're going to last much longer, and, and hopefully this will result in at least one of them being traded to... SmackDown. Let's let's split these guys up completely because I'm just I'm sick of seeing them around each other. Okay, that's my answer. I think you're just upset that somebody loves Sheamus and they didn't well, s- send any love to have you. Have you seen this guy with his stupid beard and his mohawk <laughs> or whatever he's done? Yeah, Listen, whatever floats your boat. I guess so. As they say, there's an ass for every seat. Nice, nice. <laughs> Next, Next question. question comes from <laughs> Nature Boy JB, huh. uh, who asks, "What would you do to help improve upon Apollo Cruz? He's talented." but just not working out on the main roster right now, according to Nature Boy JB. Great question, Nature Boy JB. Uh, Apollo Crews needs to be put in a tag team. Pair him up with a veteran, like, say, Mark Henry or somebody, who he can learn from the, the intricacies and what have you. Because, hey, Apollo is talented, so don't get me wrong. He, he's a pretty good wrestler. The problem is he does all this smiley, smiley nonsense. Fine, he's a baby face. He doesn't sell enough. He doesn't compel the audience to care enough about what's going on with him. If you put him in a tag team, he can be protected in that way, and he can develop those skills while remaining on the main roster. So 
that's what I would do. I would I would love to see him paired up with Mark Henry and just give those guys about a year tag team run. And then you can split them up. And, and I think Apollo would learn so much from the world's strongest man, Apollo, uh, Mark Henry. That's right. All right. No uh, no bones about it. No, no. I, hey, look, Apollo Crews, I, I just, you know, you, you smile all over the place. I just, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Jesus. Can't deal with people who are too happy. Oh. All right. And then uh, next question. Three questions. I'm going to give you three today. Three oh. legit questions okay. before I get to my question. Okay. Because I have a good one today. Good. Uh, but uh, this question comes from Bethany West from Twitter. Oh. Uh, or as my other grandfather calls it, Tweedle. Well, you know, Bethany West, I know Bethany West from Twitter. She She's actually expecting. She has a bunny. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Shout I was going to say expecting, to expecting what? Baby. But a oh, baby, nice. obviously. Yeah. I mean. Expecting you to read her question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, luckily, luckily for her, here we go. That's right. Uh, her question is, why is Nikki Bella SmackDown's team captain for Survivor Series rather than Becky Lynch? Shouldn't the champion be the captain of the team? I agree. I agree 100%. I think this is embarrassing that Nikki Bella is captain of, of the uh, SmackDown team for Survivor Series. And it's all because she has that that Total Bellas and that uh, Total Diva show. It's because she's John Cena's girlfriend. It's because her father-in-law is an executive with the company. You can add all those things in there. You, everybody knows I don't have anything against Nicole Garcia, the person. So, John Cena, please don't beat me up. But Nikki Bella, I want to see everybody beat up Nikki Bella. <laughs> Carmella, uh Everybody, just beat up Nikki Bella, please, because I can't stand. It. Let me let me throw this at you. Yeah, baseball, hockey, uh, basketball, all have team captains, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Does football have a team captain? Yes, with a jersey yep. and everything. Yep, see. that's football too. Mm-hmm. Are those always the best players? Are those always the MVP players that are the team captains? No, they're not. Okay, they're the ones that can pull the group together. Well, you think Nikki Bella can pull a group together? Uh, I'm not She's saying... She's going to be the worst wrestler on the roster. I'm not... It's not about wrestling skill. Maybe there's a personality that they're looking at. Or, Maybe they think that that's going to... Again, the the captain is the one that the personalities... In uh, in other sports, the personalities can rally around. They're oh, the sort of the locker room There's guy. nobody rallying around Nikki Bella. I'm not saying... <laughs> I'm just saying that to say that it should be based on the premise that the champion... Yeah. Or the best wrestler, yeah. quote unquote, should be captain. I agree. Maybe that's not uh, nah, you're where, it, where it's put at. It know. must be nice somebody, to be John Cena's girlfriend. In, in somebody's opinion, Vince McMahon, uh, it, you know that sh- he thinks that she's the nucleus to build this thing around. She is the nuclear crap. That's what she is. <laughs> Give me a break. Well, when you have the when you have Vince McMahon money, you can make all those decisions. Well, he runs the world, the universe. He, he runs the more, universe more, in more ways than you even realize, <laughs> and I realize. All right, no, no, C talk. Now. Come on. <laughs> all right, I'll spare you that for one more question because I, oh, I a think bonus this is question. Uh, yeah, it's a bonus. I think uh, this is a good one huh. because. Um, we're always talking about extending how much uh, wrestling is on during the week. Next question comes from uh, Roy Lusher, and he says, "What new content would WWE put into put on? I'm sorry. What new content should WWE put on the WWE Network? Because three and a half hours of Raw plus st- you know uh, reality television right. is not enough. All right, all right. First, First of all, what the else network they put on the digital? So when you're sitting on the toilet, you, yeah. you can you know look at even more wrestling. Oh, stop it right now! I, I think the old WCW. Uh, TV shows, WCW Saturday Night and Worldwide Wrestling and things of that nature, just to show more um, cohesion with uh, Raw, excuse me, Nitro and some of those other shows because storylines continued on some of these other syndicated shots. And WWE owns the rights to all of that. I would love to see those shows get put on the network. And it would give some footing, right, to some of the new stuff they're doing. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. wouldn't it be great, like, you could take all those old matches, you mm-hmm. know, pick a match from the, the 80s even, throw it on while you're having a party. Oh, I mean, dude. people would be drawn to it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? that's a, that It still holds up. No matter up. what match it is. Right. Just because, you know, yeah. it's it's almost uh, the vintageness of it would, uh, would, would pull people in. So, you know, all that stuff should be up there. Yeah, I agree. And that's that's the point. They own it, so just put it up. There. Right. Maybe there's a I don't know. Maybe there's reasoning. Maybe they have. I think the de- rights, rights, and rights things to things some are... of the music. Oh, interesting. Back then, they were using different types of music right. and deals. Well, and you stuff see like, like different that. TV shows, and you watch it on Netflix. The the musical, it's all changed. They double. They, they, yeah, they can't yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, so enough of uh, those questions because I'm sort of done listening to our unwashed masses. Uh, so oh my Buddha, here, here we, we go. Because now it's time for me and my yep. question. Yep. And every week, I like to keep you on your toes. We're going to go downhill, folks. I can already <laughs> feel it today. You know, 
you know, you say it's like a bad thing. Downhill yeah. skiing, uh, <laughs> go karts go downhill. They're yeah. fast. Sledding. Yeah. Everyone loves to and sled. You go downhill with these questions of yours. Uh, you went to Hell in a Cell. Yes, we I were did. just discussing that. It was and, great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was unable to attend, but I saw your shots from you know, seven hundred miles. Were you using the Hubble telescope to oh, take those give me a pictures? Break. Look at this wise guy. Here. I mean, what I'm saying is, you'd never sent me any pictures of close up by the time you got down there. Oh, well, hey, you didn't deserve them. That's no, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to your bodyguard and hey, make sure I figure that I, out. I, I had a picture with a guy dressed up as Macho Man Randy Savage. I did see that. How that awesome. was actually oh, really, yeah. <laughs> that was really good. He was very accurate. Yeah. It was almost looked like yeah. a Photoshop hey, job. Follow Duke Loves Wrestling online. I'm sure you're listening to the show. Send me a message so I can send you that picture, Macho you Man. You know, wrestling uh, would do well to promote sort of the Comic-Con flair Absolutely. to the events. Absolutely. With people dressing There's up. There's a lot of that. They should really, Cosplay. They yep. should, yeah, they should really push that because people are into it. I agree. All right, so you went to the Hell in a Cell and... All right. Last week we talked about the steel cage matches and should the women, you know, uh, how should women in steel cage, how should that all play out? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they should be there, but is middle America ready for it? And so what happens? What happens? Tell me what happens. So the, the big main match was Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Yes. And who won that match? Charlotte mm-hmm. stole the mat, the title from mm-hmm. Sasha stole Banks. The, all right. So to, the, to you, the fan... Charlotte stole yes. the match. So, yes. you know, I think that we can get to the point now where we can cut the BS and admit that the WWE doesn't want Sasha to be anything more than a fan favorite that they can dangle in front of you like a carrot. Oh, boy. Here we go now. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this, pal. Well, what I'm saying to you is, is think of this. She's extremely popular. Now, she was in front of the hometown crowd. The place went banana. The the, the roof right. went off. Right. Tell so she's in front of the hometown crowd. Everyone's yeah. going ape. Yep. And the the match is going on, and it's a good match. Great match. There's uh, there's a lot of physicality. Uh, there's some uh, as the, you guys were talking about earlier, people going through tables or attempting to go through tables. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know she got hit before she even came in, and so she 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 took a bit of a beating. She she's small. It. She can handle. It. She's small compared to her 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 uh, her adversary. Okay. Physically. And she's had some injury issues. But, as you could see, the place went crazy. So, let's talk about it from a business aspect. Let's do what I like to call follow the money. Here we go. So, here's Sasha, incredibly popular female wrestler and champion. She gets the loss. No one was expecting that. No. Not at all. It, it had sort of been a, a, a subtly kept secret. That she was gonna, she was gonna win that match. She should have won. She was in the hometown Boston. She should have right. won. So what happens? Vince McMahon changes his mind halfway through during the live event. He's there in the booth and says, "You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna take it away. We're gonna take it away. We're gonna give the fans what they no. We're not gonna do it. We're What's not gonna point? give the fans what they want. What's your point? We're gonna make sure the fans get their butts in the seats and our ticket money's collected and the, the concessions have been paid for, and then we're not gonna give them what they want. And you know why? Because I need to, I Vince McMahon need to protect my investment. I don't, I don't even understand what the heck you're talking about with that. He has to protect her because she, like your buddy Daniel Bryan, is potentially a few hits away from you know being in the funny form. Time out, time out, time out. Sasha Banks, okay, is is really one of the greatest female wrestlers to come around in a long time. She 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 has the fans behind her 100%. She was excellent in NXT when she made it to the main roster. Uh, fans chanting, "We want Sasha during matches, men's matches and women's matches." Mm-hmm. That's how how It's funny by the way, you is. didn't mind when they were sh- chanting, "We want Sasha," not during a Sasha match. Yet CM Punk them chanting oh, that was an issue. God, here we I'd like go to just now. expose cuz right. he's on record <laughs> oh, no. in saying that uh, a few I walked weeks into ago. that one. Yep. Listen, that's you, my friend. Okay. So what I'm saying is, yeah, she's great. She's amazing. Yes, she's a fan favorite. Yep. Yes, she is a re- she represents a huge investment by the WWE and Vince. And that's why this is what he's going to do. And I, you can mark my words is what's going to happen. He's going to dangle her in front of you. He's never going to give the fans what they really want. Have her be the reigning champion, whether she deserves it or not. He's going to wait until he can't squeeze one more nickel out of her act. He's going to put her over then. She's going to get injured. And then he's going to put her out to pasture. 
and keep her locked in like he did with Daniel Bryan. Why are you talking about Sasha Banks like you want these negative things to happen Listen, to Listen, Do you understand who you she is? You have to understand history, my friend. Okay. If we forget history, we are doomed to repeat it. And what's going to happen is the same thing that happened to her male counterpart, Daniel Bryan, is going to happen to her because Vince McMahon is in this conspiracy to run the entire world and keep all these people under his thumb. No, no, let me tell you something. Sasha Banks is is a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-generation type of athlete, okay? She's amazing, and it's not going to—I don't care what any promoter tries to do to hold her back. She is going to no. overcome all of them. No, you know what's okay? going to be hard. Yeah, she, she takes chances. She yeah. takes big hits yeah. that she physically can't take. And that's dangerous. She's still wrestling. That's da- for now. Okay. For now. But yeah. Vince is going to put the brakes on it as much as he can. You're out of your mind. He's not going to put her in these big matches where she has to go over the top and potentially get injured until he's ready to lock her into some twilight retirement nonsense like he did with Daniel he Bryan. Doesn't Mark have my a words. Daniel Bryan can't even make love to his wife. He's so depressed. Oh, my goodness. Who he knows what's going to happen with Sasha Banks when she's stuck no. as, you know, given some ridiculous backroom title and she's stuck. She can't go wrestling in another organization. No. She has to just sit there and live out her twilight. Sasha Banks is the boss. The fans love her. Shout out then to Caitlyn. Then why Caitlin. isn't she the champion? Well, you tell me. I don't know why she's not the I, champion. I did tell you. Okay. It's money. No. He doesn't want her to be the champion because he doesn't care what the fans well, think maybe because the fans he took the money. Well, maybe the fans are going to force him to make her the champion oh, yeah, again. That'll did you ever think well. about that yeah. for a second, right, Let's pal? see how many times We're that the happen. ones that run the things start, because you know, we write a spend the money. Write a letter, okay? and I'll sign it. You okay, write a letter great. to Vince McMahon, maybe and I'll sign it. Maybe I will write a letter to Vince McMahon since you want to put it like that. You know, I'm going to put your home address on it so he can come speak to you in person. Great. Great. Let me tell you something, Vince McMahon and everybody else out there. Sasha Banks is the best thing going today, okay? You better put that title back on her because there's not a woman on that main roster that's any better than Sasha Banks, and that includes Charlotte, who, by the way, stole that title from Sasha Banks. It can't be stolen if Vince made the call from the booth during the show. What are you trying to say here? I'm trying to say it's his conspiracy to make sure he protects his investment above what the fans want and above what's good for the sport. It's obvious. You sit there in your little cave and you dream up these strange things in your mind here. and I, Strange. Just point, a, I just walked you no. through A, B, C, D logic. It's so simple. If that were the case, they would have never put the title on her. You said the conspiracy They are. Thing. They're keeping you on She's the hook. Look at you. You're screaming at me because already. you're on, he's got I'm you on the hook. I'm screaming at you because you're he's talking about little, my Sasha like a, Banks. Like a trout. You have no, a hook in your it, mouth and you're going it. down and he's reeling you in, buddy. Uh, I'm done with this here. Thank you very much to Babom for joining us and also Terrell Temple. Good luck on Saturday. Folks, thank you for joining Duke Loves Wrestling. we got to stop the Boston Bad Boy before he you, goes man. too far I'm telling here. you. We'll be back next week. Hit up Facebook and Twitter. Who do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with the Boston Bad Boy? Everybody agrees Let with us me, know. obviously. Oh everybody we have goodness. on agrees with you know me. I'm what? telling you. Let's pull the plug. It's Bye-bye, so everybody. It's you're, simple. You're crazy, man. No, I can't believe money. you have and the you audacity. It's